Hi, I'm Chris Dupuy. I'm one of the designers on Kaijudo, and today I'm going to teach you how to give a quick and efficient Kaijudo demo so you can get a lot more people excited about the game. Hi, I'm Matt Mendoza. I'm on the coverage team and I don't know anything about Kaijudo, except that it's made by Wizards of the Coast. When you set up a Kaijudo demo, you just want to set up a board uh, the way you would for any other game and try to get right into it. So the first thing I want to teach you in Kaijudo is what types of cards there are. So right. if you take a look at your deck of cards, there are two main types of cards. There are spell cards and there are creature cards. The easiest way to tell the difference is creature cards have power at the bottom. Spell cards do not. They have a lot of things in common though. They each have a cost in the upper left hand corner. That's the number of mana that you'll need to tap in order to play those cards. And they each will normally have abilities in their, uh, in their text field. Those are what happens when you cast or summon that card. Uh, when you play a game of Kaijudo, you normally start with a hand of five cards and five shields in front of you. So you can go ahead and deal those out, and I'll do the same for myself. And we'll just get started really quickly. Okay. So uh, there are two different zones, which I didn't mention before, the battle zone and the mana zone, uh, and then the shield zone. Shields are cards that you have. They are your defenses against creatures that are going to be attacking you. The first thing you do is untap any of your creatures. Uh, because we're just starting, you don't have any. And then you play a card into your mana zone. And to do that, you just take a card, any card, put it into my mana zone. The important thing to note is each card has a color. Sometimes there are multicolor cards. Two important things that you need to know about your mana zone. One, whenever you put a card of any civilization into your mana zone, you've unlocked that sieve. For the rest of the game, you can cast cards of that color because you've unlocked it. The next important thing when you're looking at the level of a card or the cost of a card in the upper left hand corner is that you need to have that many cards in your mana zone in order to tap. So you need to have the color unlocked or colors if it's a multi sieve card and you need to have that many cards in your mana zone uh, to tap in order to cast it. So on my first turn I'm going to put one nature card in my mana zone and I'm going to tap it immediately to play Prickleback. Prickleback is a creature with 2000 power and he has an ability that says at the end of my turn if he's broken a shield he goes back to my hand. Now, creatures have uh, summoning sickness, so they can't attack on the turn that they come into play. So that's the end of my turn, and now we'll go to your turn. Okay. So what you should do is look at your hand and play a card. Uh, I'll play this card. Perfect. Uh, that's the Infernal Taskmaster. Now that card is a little unique because it is a dual sieve card. It has two different civilizations. So you've got the added benefit of unlocking two sieves at once. Go for the rest of the game, you can summon fire creatures and darkness creatures. But the card comes into your mana zone tapped, which means you can't immediately tap it for mana. So it's a perfect play on your first turn. At the start of my turn, I untap all my cards, I draw a card, and then I can play a card in my mana zone and bring out more creatures or cast more spells. So play a bronze arm saber tooth. Now it's another nature card, but I can tap both of them to bring out Jackalax. Jackalax has 4,000 power, but he has an ability that says he can only attack creatures, so I can't attack your shields. Now, in Kaijudo, you're playing as a Kaijudo Duel Master, dueling against an opponent, summoning creatures and casting spells in order to break the shields of your opponent and then get one final creature attacking through to your opponent once they have no shields. So that's the trick, and Jackalax will help you to clear creatures off the battlefield, but he won't help you to uh, break shields. But he has summoning sickness, but Prickleback doesn't. Prickleback's going to attack. Now, because I'm the attacker, I get to choose which shield I'm going to break, and I'm going to break this one. Okay. So you go ahead and put that into your hand, and if it has a shield blast icon, does it oh. have? Okay, perfect. Spells sometimes have this icon called shield, uh, that is called shield blast. Just is that like good? That. That's good. When a shield would be broken, okay. you look at that card. If it is a shield blast, you can reveal it and cast it for free, even if you haven't unlocked the sieve, even if you don't have that mana available. So you can cast it even if you didn't have any darkness creatures, uh, darkness cards in your mana zone. And it has an ability that says target enemy creature gets minus 3,000 power. So you can target either of these, but if you target Prickleback, he only has 2,000 power and he'll be destroyed. Okay. And then that goes into your mana zone as well. Or your discard pile. Yeah. Uh, so that's the end of my turn because Jackalax can't attack. So you can go ahead okay. and draw a card. All right. So you draw. And untap. Yep. And I will play this mana. Yep. And then I'll play a Boom Skull. Yep. And you're going to go ahead and tap both of those. Perfect. Now, Boom Skull is a protector, which means whenever I attack another creature, he can tap to redirect that attack. 
He has guard, just like Skirmisher. Guard's a little bit different in that you can't attack at all. Okay. But he also has Go Boom. Whenever he wins a battle, he's vanished because he's 6,000 power. He's a lot bigger than some of the other creatures. Uh, but he has summoning sickness, so you can't really do anything. Okay. I'll go ahead and draw and untap my cards. And I will play Hunter Sphere, which is a dual Civ card. Okay. Uh, and I don't have any cards that are two or less. And uh, Jackalax can attack now. So I don't have any cards in my hand that are two or less, so I don't want to summon anything. So I'll keep my okay. hand. Jackalax has Skirmisher, which means he can't attack you. He can only attack tapped creatures that you control. Okay. But you don't actually have any tapped creatures, so he can't do anything. So I will pass the turn. And then you want to untap your stuff. All right, and then... Perfect, and that comes into the battle zone tapped. Okay. And then you have two mana that you can uh, spend. Do you have any cards that cost two or less? I have this skeleton soldier that costs one. Perfect. He has blocker, which means just like protector, if I'm going to attack you or another creature you control, you can tap in to redirect the attack to that creature. Okay. Well, and I can't attack. Can't attack, nope. I'll go ahead and draw a card, untap my mana, and with four mana, I will bring out Bronze Arm Sabertooth. Bronze Arm Sabertooth is a unique type of creature. He's an evolution creature, which means I have to put it on one of my beast kin. Luckily, Jackalax is a beast kin. Okay. So I'll evolve Jackalax into Bronze Arm Sabertooth. He's a four cost, but he's also very, very large. He's 7,000 power, and he has Devil Breaker, so when he attacks you, he's gonna break two shields. But he also has one with nature. When he would be banished, he goes back, he dies to the mana zone. Okay. But unlike regular creatures, evolution creatures can attack on the turn they enter the battle zone. So I'm going to go ahead and tap him to attack. As the attacker, I get to choose which shields. However, you have a blocker. If you want, you can tap that blocker to redirect my attack to him. Okay. Now there's a couple of different things you want to think about. Whenever I break your shields, your defenses go down a little bit, but you draw these cards into your hand. However, if you block, your defenses will stay a little bit better. Okay. So it's I up to you. I think I will block. All right. So these creatures battle, and when they okay. battle, whenever two creatures battle, you compare the power. So this creature is 7,000 power, this creature is 2,000 power, this creature is banished. If they would ever be the same, they would both be banished. Okay. So, my skeleton soldier is dead. There's no lasting damage in Kaijudo. It's a straight power comparison, and that's it. If both creatures had the same power, they would both lose the battle, and they'd both be banished. So, Bronze Arm Sabertooth stays tapped, and it's your turn. All right. And basically, what you want to do in a demo is you want to get into the game as soon as possible and you want to get a lot of the rules explanation going in the back and forth. Kaijudo plays very quickly so even though you're in the second or third turn and you're still kind of teaching your opponent the rules it's okay because the game is going to be over uh, soon and they're going to be able to play with a lot more knowledge. If you front load a lot of information into your demo you'll kind of get that glazed eye effect where they're listening, but they're not really taking anything in. So getting them into the game, getting them looking at their cards and asking questions keeps them engaged as you continue to play. Uh, so uh, at this point, what we would normally do is continue to go through turn by turn, uh, finishing the game, and then we'd probably play another one right away since they have a little bit more information, since your opponent would have a little bit more information in front of you. But I think that's all we need for uh, uh, this video. I know how to play Kaijudo now. Yay! Thank you for watching. From Dallas, I'm Chris Dupuis. Stay tuned for the rest of the championship.